Okay, now that we've created our data set by from Node Red sending those JSON data package over to AWS IoT Core, we can kind of see what happened and if this worked. So let's go to IoT Analytics. And from here, let's go to the prepare, which we've already done. So if we want to check a couple diagnostics, we can go over here to the channel and scroll down here. And you're given a little monitoring of your incoming data packages. And you can see here we got incoming messages that worked out. If we expand this here, we can see what time they came in. And of course, from AWS IoT Core, we can look at all these randomly generated values. Now remember that timestamp's not randomly generated. That was from Node Red itself, which gave it a Unix encoded timestamp. And we're going to actually use that when we do our Pandas graph in SageMaker. So that's going to be important. But you can also go over here to the monitor to make sure that your data is coming in if you don't see anything. And again, this is helpful if you want to see if you have a certificate security policy issue problem where your incoming JSON package is banging against AWS IoT, yet you're not getting information over here at the test console. So, all right, that's already in there. Of course, when you go back there, that's gone, but it's already saved, so it doesn't matter. So let's go over to AWS IoT Analytics, and you'll see if we go back here, we have our channel, we have our pipeline. That'll actually, if you click this on, this will give us some additional diagnostics and our data store. But what we want to do now is analyze our data set. So this whole process was automated. This is not automated. So what I want to hear is go to our data set, which is this one, as you remember. And it's already recorded in here. Let's go ahead to actions. And this now is going to run our data set. All that stuff that we just sent to the AWS IoT Analytics can be worked on right now, can, can creating automatic ad hoc CSV common rated separated value file by just hitting run now. But this tends to take a while, so I'll probably either pause this or speed it up. So hit this and you'll see it's saying creating. Okay, that literally took about a minute, maybe a minute and a half. If you have a really huge uh, data set, as in you sent just a whole bunch of packages over a longer period of time or a shorter period of time with more frequent interval, obviously this analysis is gonna take a lot longer. And it's not really much of analysis. So what's cool is it automatically produces a spreadsheet. Uh, and before you used to have to, it would automatically try to detect the values and sometimes the automatic detection didn't work. And it's been really robust since I've tried the newer version. It automatically detected all our key value pairs from our JSON package. It did everything right. It only adds one additional field in and it did that before. It's this normally formatted underscore DT, that's for date time. So again, I like using these Unix timestamps a little bit better, you know, for engineering purposes. But if you're doing this more for sales or research or marketing, they're going to want it in this format. So I'm just going to keep everything. And I don't need to save this because this data set is already now on AWS. So when I do SageMaker in the next re uh, lecture, it's going to reference this data set by me just bringing it into my Python code in SageMaker without me doing any additional thing. The very last thing I want to show you is if I go over to my data set that's already in my data store, I can download this to a CSV. So how I would download this is simply go back up here. We're on details. I'm just going to content and we can use any previous version, but right here it gives us the option to download this to the CSV. So what I normally like to do, because I worry if I keep it on the AWS cloud anonymously, it may disappear and maybe I want to use this ad hoc data again. Go ahead, you can go ahead and download it and then I can upload it to an S3 bucket. And then once it's in my S3 bucket, and I've already described how to do S3 if you don't know how earlier in the lectures, uh, I can pull this into SageMaker as well that way. I'm not going to use that for this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to pull it into SageMaker directly from the data store. And it's a really nifty way to do that. But you can do it that way. And another thing I'll show you here is cron jobs. You can schedule to run this data set every so often. So, you know, if you want to open a new channel and pipeline and redo the whole data set for continual ad hoc analysis, you can do it this way hourly, daily, weekly, over 15 minutes. At some point, this is overlapping a lot of what you would do with Kinesis Firehose. So you may want to check, you know, analyzing through Kinesis Firehose through an S3 statically hosted site versus doing this via SageMaker. What you want to do is a lot of the time going to come down in the long run to what's going to cost you more money. 
So you'll have to explore that yourself. But I know when we get into SageMaker, that could be a little bit expensive because it runs on a medium sized instance. So those are all things to remember. Okay, let's move on to the next lecture. We'll cover using AWS SageMaker with this data store we just created. And we can use this to manipulate our data set and take any criteria we want and graph it. So let's do that next.